Hello and welcome to RegoFix Tech Chat. My name is David McHenry. I am the engineering and technical manager here at RegoFix USA. In past Tech Chats, we've spent lots of time going over how to maintain your power grip tool holding and your ER tool holders as well. But these aren't the only tool holders that you are gonna have in your shop or that your machine needs to use. So let's spend a few moments and go over some other very common tool holders and things you can do to make those tool holders last longer. I've gone out and grabbed a couple tool holders to run through to talk about how to maintain those other types of tool holders that you might have in your machine tool changer or your tool crib. So let's get started. First tool holder I wanna talk about are milling chucks. Now, milling chucks have a very broad use and they're made by lots of different manufacturers. So the first thing you need to do is make sure your manufacturer has a recommended maintenance schedule on these. You know, it's kind of like changing the oil in your car. So if we talk about a milling chuck, inside of the milling chuck is a needle bearing cage and needle bearings inside of those. And with those needle bearings, there's grease. As your tool is being used, that grease might get flushed out you might have an O-ring failure or a, or a seal failure, and that's gonna dry out the inside of your milling chucks. And you'll know that when you turn it. It should turn nice and smooth, and you should feel the bearing starting to climb to, to create gripping force. When that motion becomes very jerky and doesn't operate very smooth, well, then it's time for a rebuild. And the good thing is, is most milling chuck manufacturers offer products that allow you to rebuild it, such as new O-ring seals or new caps that go on to those, and then they'll recommend the type of grease that can be used. A lot of manufacturers will even offer a rebuild service. So as your milling chucks get to the point of needing rebuilt, you might be able to do it yourself or send them to your ma different manufacturers to have that done for you. One of the most common tool holders you will find used all around the world is an end mill holder. It's pretty basic. It's a hole with a set screw going through the side that holds the tool in place. What can wear on this? Well, actually a lot can. And let's start off with that screw to start with. You need to make sure that you inspect this screw on a regular basis. Remember, you're tightening this against your piece of carbide or high-speed steel. Well, the carbide is going to be a lot harder than this set screw. So watch the bottom surface of this for any kind of wear, deformation, or burrs. A burr on this can actually cause a fracture point on that end mill, and then you have premature failure on your end mills. Well, what about the tool holder itself? Well, you have to remember that with an end mill holder, you have a location that you're clamping with below the nose. That means your bending moment starts way down here. So you need to inspect the opening on a regular basis for bell mouthing to make sure that carbide end mill or the end mills you're using haven't deformed the metal around the upper edge of your end mill holder. It's pretty easy to see and it's something you'll, you can easily see when it's time to replace. So check the set screws and then also check the openings on your end mill holders for bell mouthing. Another very popular tool holder you will find in most spindles or a large variety of spindles that aren't using power grip would be your shrink fit type of tool holder. Now, what kind of maintenance do I have on this? I mean, there's no moving parts, right? Well, there actually is. The heating process actually causes the opening to move, it opens and contracts, which allows dirt, debris, and oils and coolant to get inside that ID. Then when you go through and do a heating cycle, well, you bake that oil or that coolant inside of the ID. Now, these are nylon brushes. They're, they're not actually the rigid brushes that are recommended. But what you can do is go to your manufacturer of your heat shrink tool, and you should be able to find little copper brushes that are made for the ID openings of your shrink fit tool. And that will allow you to go in and clean that ID, clean out the scale, and try to make that shrink fit holder last a little bit longer before you need to replace that. Just basic maintenance you can do to make that holder last longer. Another high performance tool holder that you're likely to find in your tool changer is a hydraulic holder. Now, 
Hydraulic holders are pretty neat because, well, you can use hydraulic sleeves like we've talked about in the past. So when we talk about maintenance on a hydraulic holder, let's start with the real easy stuff first. Let's make sure that our hydraulic sleeves are cleaned on the OD and the ID before they're used. And let's make sure the ID of that tool holder is clean. Now, in this case, I can stick with my nylon brushes and I can clean that ID out very simply with some alcohol or simple green. But what about other maintenance I have to worry about for a hydraulic holder? Well, a hydraulic holder is normally made up of two pieces. There's an outer body and an inner sleeve, and they are brazed or welded together. That allows you to have that internal chamber that your hydraulic screw can compress, giving you that clamping force. Well, you gotta think about, I have two pieces that are welded or brazed together. That brazing does have a life cycle, it is something that your operators that know the feel of their holders should be able to feel when, well, hey, it doesn't feel like it's clamping all the way or the pressure's changed to seat this all the way to the bottom. So the operator has to be a little bit more aware of what he's doing with the hydraulic holder. Um, if it loses any oil whatsoever, I've changed the volume internally, which means I've changed the clamping force, which means I've changed the performance. So something as simple as backing the screw out too far could cause a problem or a leak in that brazed area will cause a permanent failure for that tool holder. In most cases, once a hydraulic holder has created a leak in the brazed area, it's time to replace it. A very popular tool holder that has a lot of versatility is a basic drill chuck. Now, these work off of a worm gear drive type of system so that as I rotate the screw, the fingers close in to hold on to various size of drills or cutting tools. Normally not the most accurate type of tool holder out there, but it is very useful for a lot of shops. So what maintenance should I worry about on this? Well, I have in this case, I have three moving fingers that go up and down. So when I go to clean this, I probably don't want to stick air down inside there and take a chance of pushing any chips into those, those areas. I probably want to use my nylon brushes again, clean out the ID, make sure it strokes evenly all the way from top to bottom. Just do the best you can to keep from forcing chips inside of the little keyways that the fingers move on. Sometimes these holders can be rebuilt. That's up to your manufacturer that you happen to work with. Let's finish off with a pullback type of collet tool holder. Now, these collets actually drop in, they're threaded in the back. I then put my wrench up through the tail of the tool holder and I pull them back into the tool holder. So with these, I have a couple of different maintenance areas to worry about. Let's start off with the backside. Now, this is a steep taper, obviously, and I'm gonna have a pull stud on this. So every time I go to use this type of tool holder, I have to remove the pull stud. Well, that becomes a problem when we talk about pull stud torque and over torquing that we've done in previous videos. It also becomes a problem when you think about how this tool might be stored in an auto tool changer. If I'm running coolant through, and I have a pull stud, and I have a bearing mechanism inside that I'm rotating, and it's in a tool changer like this, well, I have a lot of coolant that's gonna be inside. So definitely look at your different manufacturers that you have out there. See if they have any requirements for oiling or sealing to make sure the coolant or oil you're putting into the back of that tool holder, that they're not gonna degrade the turning mechanism or the clamping drawbar force mechanism that's in there. Well, what about that? Well, there is a torque spec. So you need to make sure that you have a proper torque wrench or T-wrench that you can pull that collet back in, hit the proper torque every time to make sure you're not over torquing it. On the business end of this, well, what do I do on this side? Because, well, in this case, it's a pretty small opening but I would still use my nylon brushes and my simple green or my alcohol to make sure I clean that ID out, get the chips out best possible, 
and make sure that I have the best mating surfaces I can have for my assembly. Now, definitely take a look at your manufacturer for this and see what they recommend. We spent the last few minutes going over a few other types of tool holders that are out there that you will find in your tool room or in your CNC tool changer. Now, I just covered the basics. There's a lot more information that you can get from the manufacturer of your different products. Make sure you follow their guidelines. The big takeaway, make sure you're cleaning all your tool holders properly. These tool holders, as well as Power Grip and ER, are made to give you high performance results. You can only get those results if you maintain and clean your tooling.